In the previous video, we talked about the importance of glucose as a simple sugar. We talked about its molecular structure. What I want to do in this video is study how glucose can be can how we can use it as a building block for more complex sugars and, and more complex carbohydrates. So this right over here, I've copy and pasted two glucose molecules. You can we can number their carbons. This is one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three. Four, five, six. We have them in their cyclical in their cyclic form, and what we're going to do is explore what would happen if this oxygen right over here. I'll highlight it in this magenta color. Were to use one of its lone pairs, one of its lone pairs to do a nucle. What's in organic chemistry referred to as a nucleophilic attack on the number one carbon on the left-hand glucose molecule, and the reason why that could happen. Is this number one carbon right over here? It's attached to two oxygens. Oxygens are very electronegative. They like to hog electrons when they're in a covalent bond. So that's going to give this carbon a partially positive charge. And this oxygen is very electronegative. It's going to hog the electrons from this hydrogen and this and the number four carbon on the right-hand glucose molecule. So it's going to have a partially negative charge. And so it is going to be nucleophilic. It's going to be attracted to, I guess you could say, the the, the carbon nucleus to to the to the, the the partially positive charge right over here. And so as it does that, it's going to form, it's going to use a lone pair to form a bond. It's going to share it with the carbon. And then the carbon can let go of another bond. So it could let go of it could let go of the of both of these electrons in that bond. Now you could say oh, maybe that just goes back to the oxygen and it forms a hydroxide anion. Or we could imagine, well maybe it maybe it'll be used Either maybe you know maybe it forms a hydroxide anion first, or maybe that bond immediately goes and picks up a hydrogen ion out of out of the solution from from another from a hydronium from a hydronium ion sitting someplace. So this can be used. This can be used to form a bond with this hydrogen ion, which is really this is just a proton here. You take an electron away from hydrogen, it's just going to be a proton. Well, what's that going to do? Well, that's going to link these two glucose molecules. And it's going to link it. It's going to link it just like this. And it's important to keep track of our our molecules here. So this oxygen is now going to be this oxygen is now going to be that oxygen. This bond between the number four carbon on the right hand side and that oxygen is this bond right over here. This this when we took this this electron pair to form this bond with the number one carbon, that is that is let me do it in that magenta color. That is this bond, this bond right over here. The oxygen, this oxygen, is now this oxygen right over here. And these, this electron pair is now formed a bond with this hydrogen. So we could say, well, that could be, that could be, let me do that blue. That could be, that could be this hydrogen, this could be this bond right over here. Now the one difference is, Based on how I've drawn it, this oxygen, or, or sorry, this oxygen, the way I've drawn it, it's attached to the number one carbon here, the number four carbon here. We have that over, we've already done that over here. Number one carbon on the left molecule, number four carbon on the right molecule. But we also have it bonded, we also have it bonded to a hydrogen. So just the way I've done it right now, it's still bonded to a hydrogen. It's going to have a net positive. It's, not go, it's going to have a net positive charge. Over here, it was neutral. It was neutral right over here, but then it, it, it's now sharing its electrons. It's now sharing both of those electrons in a covalent bond. And so you can think of, think of it as giving, it's given it away. It's giving away an electron to this carbon, so it's going to have a net positive charge. But then to get back to neutral, you could imagine, well, maybe, maybe some, some type of a, a, a water molecule could could grab that ion. So this may be this one right over here. This one right over here could grab, could grab that hydrogen. And then these electrons, both of them, and it would just grab the hydrogen nucleus, the proton. And so these two electrons could go back to this oxygen and then become this oxygen would become neutral. And so what we would be left with, what would we what we would be left with, actually let me just erase this, is that this hydrogen this hydrogen would now be attached would now be attached to this oxygen and we would have a hydronium 
hydronium ion. And this is reasonable. We, we essentially had some hydronium. We had a hydrogen proton out here before, and we still do. Now it's attached to a water. So we haven't, uh, you know, we, we've, we've taken a proton and we've given back a proton. So we, we haven't, you know, net net uh, uh, kind of added charge or taken charge away, taken charge away from the system. But the important thing that we just saw is as these two things, as these two things atta essentially attached, we lost, we lost a water molecule, or I guess net net, this system lost a water molecule. It took a, it, it, it took up a charge uh, to do it to build that water molecule. But the thing that really kind of escaped from both of these two molecules is is this is this is this right over here. This H is this H. This oxygen is this oxygen. And this hydrogen is this hydrogen right over here. And so this type of a reaction in which we're synthesizing a more complex molecule, a longer chain of a longer chain of glucose of glucose molecules, this is called a dehydration synthesis. So what we just did, this right over here is called a de hydration dehydration synthesis why are we calling it a dehydration synthesis well we've just taken a water out if you imagine losing water we talk about that's you're you're getting dehydrated so this and why synthesis well we put two things together we synthesized a larger molecule sometimes this would be this would be called a condensation reaction con conden condensation reaction and by doing this these two glucose molecules are able to form a disaccharide now. So each individually, each individually, they were monosaccharides. So this one on the right, that's a mono, monosaccharide. What does monosaccharide mean? Well, it means mono means single or, or one. And saccharide comes from the Greek word for sugar. The Greek word for sugar is, is I'm going to mispronounce it, is saccharon. When people talk about something being saccharin, they're saying something is very, very sweet. The Greek word for sugar is saccharin. It's, so saccharide means it's a sugar. It's a single sugar. So that the meaning there is sugar. And the general term saccharide refers to not just these simple sugars, monosaccharides, but it could mean it could mean two of these things put together, and there's other simple sugars, fructose and, and others, or it could mean a huge number of these put together. You could have polysaccharides. And that whole class saccharides, these we also associate with carbohydrates. Now this, now we went from two monosaccharides to right over here. This is a disaccharide. This is a disaccharide. We have two. Two monosaccharides were involved. This is a disaccharide. And this particular disaccharide is maltose or malt sugar. Maltose. Maltose. So the whole point of this video is to see how you can start with these simple sugars, these monosaccharides, and form disaccharides. In fact, you could keep going. You could keep having dehydration synthesis, condensation reactions, to keep adding more and more monosaccharides to build longer and longer chains. So if you were to keep doing that, if you were to keep building chains of these things, now you're getting into the, now you're getting into the world of polysaccharides. Polysaccharides. Or many simple sugars, many monosaccharides, many monosaccharides put together. And this is the case for sugar, but this is, this is something that you'll see often in chemistry, where you have a single unit. Here it's a single sugar, but in, if we talk it in, in more general terms, we would call it a monomer. Monomer. And then if we have a bunch of these monomers put together, we would call it a, we would call it a polymer. Now, Polysaccharides are super important, and you have probably eaten some polysaccharides today, and you probably have some poly. In fact, I'm sure you have some polysaccharides stored in your cells right now. If you put a bunch of glucose molecules, if we were to keep this process going, and we were put, and and we were to have a bunch of glucose molecules together, when you find it in in plants, it'll often be in the form of a starch. So a polysaccharide that you'll find in a plant is a is a starch, a bunch of glucose is put together. In your own cells, uh, to have a immediate energy store, a bunch, of gluco a, a bunch of glucose is put together is glycogen, is 
glycogen. So these, these macromolecules, these polysaccharides that are made up of a bunch of, a bunch of simple sugars, a bunch of monosaccharides put together, these are very common in biology. You have eaten them and you are storing them in your body right now.